Today's year is were, uh, were there dinosaurs on the ark or did the dinosaurs uh, miss, miss the boat? This is actually a dinosaur bone that is available in the museum in uh, the German colony. It's called the Museum of Natural History in Jerusalem, Rechov Moliver 6. There's actually a dinosaur bone. Look at the size of that bone. But some people say, don't confuse me with the facts, okay? <laughs> This is a dinosaur bone, actually. Compliments of Yehuda Lev, he took this nice picture. Very nice. I'm not the dinosaur, you know, I'm standing next to the dinosaur bone. You know some people say I'm a dinosaur because I don't have a cell phone. But anyway, uh, museum in Rehov Mulliver Street, German colony, five minutes from here, you actually see these gigantic dinosaur bones. But some people say uh, dinosaurs are not kosher. I mean, uh, no, don't confuse me with the facts because my mind is already, uh, my mind is made up. What about the, how do dinosaurs fit into the picture? And were they on the ark and why should we care? If you look at source num side number one, this is called the Drush Orechayim. Pesach, you have one? No. Drush Orechayim, can you look in with somebody? I don't have enough copies. The Drush Orechayim, this was written by Please double up and look in. This was written by the Tferet Yisrael. The Tferet Yisrael wrote this at the end of Seyed and Ezekiel in his commentary on the Mishnah, written in the year 1845. Now, if you look at the uh, Mishnayas today, somehow this piece is missing. Mysteriously, this is censored out, but this is a copy, thanks to my late brother, Shlomo Zalmo Zechorin Levracha, he showed me this. This is a copy of the, of the manuscript of the Teferet soil, the end of Seyed and Ezekiel, the Danzig edition in 1845, it's called Rosh Arachayim, but in our Mishnayas it's been censored out. And when you read it, you'll see why it's been censored out. The source, side number one. Look what he says. The second paragraph, you see that? Hayote Gavon Baretz. We find in the valleys and the mountains Chayot Hayam Ashinaskashu Hoy Eleven. We found these ancient creatures of the sea that have been fossilized like what? Evan. The Chocham Echot Choker, Tivi. He mentions guys Kusir Shemo, Kosa Shemechol, Anak Mine Chayot Shemotsu, Betachtis Oretz, Yesh Mehen. Today we don't have these, these creatures. What happened to them? Look at the second paragraph. You see there's a check there. Now this is a super Haredi rabbi, the Tiferet Yisrael. Without him, nobody would study Mishnayot, right? Now he's writing this in the year 1845. Do you see the second paragraph? If you don't have one, please look in with your neighbor. There's a check there. Vikva Yodanu. You have it, Pesach? Mekra Yodanu. Me'atzmos chaya naki achat. We already know the bones of this gigantic creature. Shemim tzaz be'emek eretz. Sevav ir. What's the next word? Baltimore be America. I want to be in America. Baltimore be America. This is the super Haredi rabbi in Danzig, Germany in 1845. Said that he heard that in Baltimore be America, they found this gigantic uh, creature, bones. Ashe Archa Yud Zayin Regel. How long is it, Avram? Yud Zayin Regel is what? 17 feet. The Gavoa Mikapa is Ragleha or Shainim At Katsay Yud Elef Regel. How tall is it? 11 feet. Umekaf is given the dimensions. Umekaf Ragleha Akronim At Go Yesh Tes Regel. The Gambi Europa, you see? The Gambi Europa. Ube Eretz. Gabriel Kemetsa Make Eretz Atzomoy Zolta Chaya. In Europe too, not just in America, they find these fossil bones. Pzurim Achas Heino here and there. The Koru B'Shem Uchol Min Chaya Kazot. What's the next word? Mammoth or mammoth? You see that? Have a mammoth, mammoth. Next paragraph. There's a check there. V'Chein Matzu. You see the check? V'Chein Matzu Min Bria Avniit. What does that mean? Maza Avniit. Fossilized like a stone. Shekara. What's the next word? Aquachadon. Aquachadon. Shekavoa tesvov regel. How tall is it? 15 feet. 
Ba'archa at Sadik Regal. How long is it? 90. 90 feet. I think he's talking about TX Rex. Hmm? T Rex. T Rex or T Rex, right? That it would, it, it would eat vegetables. Uh, it's not carnivorous. The old min chaya cheret matzu shekara maglavs maglasavoris. It is shehoyta rak meat katan mia mia magda chadon avol hoyta terefet vachelat basa. Certain of these creatures were vegetarians, and certain of these creatures were what Car carnivorous. So where are they today, and where did they come from? You hear? Look at the last paragraph, Avram. Fasten your seatbelts. Umakal Omor, near Borur. From all that I said, it's clear. The last paragraph, there's a check, there's an X there, no? Check, X. Umakal Omor, near Borur. Shekal Masha Masra Lono Mikibolim. All of the Kabbalists have been teaching us. Zeh Kama Meyachana. Which Kabbalists is he talking about? Rabbeinu Bachia and Ramban. Shekava Hoy Oilam Pam Echot. These dinosaur bones were not from this world. There was already a world once before, before this world. And it was what? Destroyed. And it was set up another world. You hear? Before this world, there were previous worlds four times before. So therefore, these dinosaurs never made it on the Ark Avram because they are what? From previous worlds that God had made and he had destroyed. And each time that God created another world in this world, the world of Mazah hit Galeh Avram. How do you say hit Galeh? Revealed. 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 I think he's speaking about the E word. Hmm? Each time that God created the world, the world developed more and more. You hear what he's saying? So these dinosaur bones, there's nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't contradict the Torah because they are from previous worlds, who knows how many millions of years, 5779, the clock begins ticking from the birth of Adam. But before that, eons could have passed. We'll soon see. It doesn't contradict the science. 5779 is when this creature called Adam received the godly soul. But before that, we'll still see who no untold ages could have passed from these previous worlds. And look at the last paragraph. Vitminu achai. Vitminu achai or achi. Believe me, my brother. Shesod anifla hazeh. This wonderful secret, Avram, see that? Which wonderful secret are you talking about? Shesod ha-nifla hazeh. Nichta be'er heitev is written very clear. The Pasha Rishona Shebet HaRoseinu Abdoja. Here. So he's saying, now he wrote this in the year 1845. Darwin did not come out with his theory Chav until what year? 18, I checked it, 1859. So in 1845, the super Haredi rabbi is already writing about evolution. Isn't that incredible? The Teferit Yisrael, but again, you will not find it in our Mishnayot. Somebody censored it. But in the end of Nezikin, and this is a copy, thanks to my late brother, who had the original of the Ksav Yad of the Teferit Yisrael, where he writes clearly about what? The world developed. There were different worlds before this world. And the dinosaurs never made it onto the ark because they were from the previous world. By the time Noah came around, all was left was what? These bones who could have been millions of years before God created this world. When you say this world, you mean that he, he, he destroyed the world? That's what the Kabbalists say. Look at this paragraph. Yeah, it's the same word, but destroyed. He destroyed the worlds and he built new ones on this planet. You hear what he's saying over here? And this is the fifth time around. They are upon him already. God was experimenting. Evan Ezra was experimenting, right? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, which is a very, very uh, 
difficult concept. What is God teaching me? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Never give up until you get it right. Now, there's a hint to this. Genesis 1, the era of Aiboke, it says Yom Echad. You should have said, you know, you don't have it on your sheets. The era of Aiboke, Yom Echad. It should have said Yom Rishon, no? Avram, say Yom Rishon. It says Yom Echad. It doesn't say Yom Rishon. It says Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. How come it doesn't say Yom Rishon? It's only the first day. Because it wasn't the first day. Because there were eons before that. It was Yom Echad. What does Yom Echad mean? One day. It was not the first day, Chava, because there were civilizations before. before. So it couldn't be Yom Rishon. Therefore, the Torah is very careful. It doesn't say Yom Rishon, the first day. It says Yom Echad, day one, because it wasn't the first. There were previous worlds before this. Who says this? The great the Tiferet Yisrael, a super Haredi rabbi, that I uh, one who studies Mishnayot, Avram, cannot study Mishnayot without the Tiferet Yisrael. But some people were upset and therefore this is missing from his commentary at the end of Seyed and Zikin in the printed editions. This is a copy of the, uh, his manuscript. In Danzig, Germany, 1845, way before Darwin came out with uh, his theory of, of evolution, which was not until, which was not until what? 1859. So the dinos were from previous worlds, before Noah. Millions of years before Noah. Scientists are right. But that's not our world. That's not our world. We're concerned with our world. We're concerned with our world. So there's no need to cover up when Haredi school kids out and go to the museum, they put a tarpaulin over their, um, yeah. the dinosaur bones. Yeah. There's no need to do that. Right? Ha-folkba, va folkba, the kulaba, everything is what is in the Torah. Even evolution, we'll see soon, how even evolution is part of God's tool. Are you going to limit God? Like God couldn't use evolution to create man? You're putting a limit on what God's toolbox, Abraham? I'm going to show you Genesis. T you look at the Ramban. You're sitting down. Zizel, Nachmanides was Haredi rabbi, right? Nachmanides. Genesis 2, verse 7. He speaks about the guided evolution of man. The great Ramban, I think he was Haredi Yehuda. In Genesis 2, 7, he speaks about the guy, we'll talk about it soon, about the guided evolution that God used evolution to create man. You're going to say God couldn't use evolution? You're going to put a limit on God's talents, chas v'shalom? But the question is, why did God create the world? Why did God create the world? Says the Ramchal and Derech Hashem. Are you listening to this? I wouldn't dare say this. But the Ramchal in Derech Hashem says, You know why God created the world? Kaviyochel, God was lonely. Because God is good. And a being that's good needs somebody to what? <laughs> to express his goodness. The taklis haktov says that there Hashem lehetiv. The taklis of a good being is to what? Lehetiv. What does that mean? Give away. To do good. To bestow good. So God had to create creatures and mankind. Otherwise, how could God express his goodness? To bestow tov on his creatures. Tachlis ha-tov, says the Ramchal, lehetiv. And we have a mission, Avram, v'lachta bedrachav. What does that mean? Walk this way? Remember Groucho Marx? Walk this way. V'lachta bedrachav. Ma'u afata, walk in his ways. So every time we do a kind act to somebody, what are we doing? We're walking in God's ways. V'lachta bedrachav. So therefore God had to create the world. To be good means to do good. How could you do good if you ain't got what? Someone to, Someone to do good for. And therefore getting married is the first bit of the Torah. Right? What is it? Genesis 1. Therefore a man should leave his parents and cling to his wife. Right? 
God says it's not good for man to be alone. If man is alone with no wife to share and no family to give, he can't be good. And if he can't be good, he can't be godlike. And if he can't be godlike, who needs him? So God says, It's not good. It's not good for man to be alone. That's not shot. You can't trust always the English. If man is alone, he can't be good. I have to create for him a helpmate to express his goodness, to imit imitate the boss. God is constantly giving. So we see over here, we see over here that the uh, Ferret Israel already speaks about what he calls uh, Aguacaton and Mammoth, Woolly Mammoth, Maglamosaurus. That's Haredi rabbi from 1845. Avram, today it's not PC, right? You think they put this rabbi in Cherem? Huh? No, they taught. Right? You look at side number two. Fasten your seatbelts for this. Side number two. Shemam Adam. He called their name Adam. When he called their name Adam. Do you see Torah Tamim in footnote? Call Adam Shain Lo Isha Eina Adam. Only when man had woman together they were called what? Adam. But a man without a woman Eina Adam. Do you Adam? Okay. Now, were there cavemen in Gan Eden, David? I know they're cavemen in Gaza, but are, were they cavemen in Gan Eden? Yes. So fasting is Yitzchak. Look at Puzzle Gimel. See Puzzle Gimel in the text. Vechi Adam Shlosh Mashana. Adam lived 130 years. Vayoled b'dmutal kitzalmo. After 130 years, he gave birth to a child according to his image and his what form. Vikos Shemo Shet. So for 130 years, where was Adam? Out to lunch, where was he? Hmm? So look at this incredible Gemara, Torah Tamima. You see that? It's a um, footnote, Torah Tamima. Vayola ben Musa Kitzalmo. It's underlined, I think. There's a check mark there. A check mark there. This is Tractate Ervin, page 18. What does that mean? Omer ben Yirmir ben Elazar. Kol otam hashanim. Shohaya Adam Arishon binidui. All of these years after the sin of Eitz Adas, Adam and Rishon was Nidoi. His wife kicked him out. Hmm? He left. He left and he uh, had a one night stand. What's it called? One night stance? One night affairs? And he gave birth to Ruchen Shaden Belilin. Whatever that is. Shenema, Eichi Adam Shloshem Mashana, Vayolet, with Musa Kitzalmoy. Mikhail Dada Idna says the Gemara and Ervin, but until now, Lav Ketzal He gave birth to creatures, but they didn't have the image of God. The strange Gemara, Ervin, page 18. What, what is this Gemara talking about? What, what, right? So if you look at the check, the, the Rambam, you see the check chet there? I think there's a check there on the other side. You want to turn over that uh, Chava? You have a paper? You want to take that? It's a side number two. The Rambam, Amor Nevuchim, on the bottom there, Perik Zion says, what is this Gemara talking about? The Rambam didn't believe in Shadim. What are you talking about? That Adam was having relations with Shadim? What does that mean? So you see the footnote there? A Rambam, a Mora, Nebuchim, Perik Zion, Rishon, Bir, Inyan, Agadazu. Da Kavana, Shahoy, the Druch, and Shadim, a little. What does that mean? Hanurak, Gufim, Hadoimim, La Noshim. Yiddish Adam had. Adam had relations with these creatures that looked like people, but they didn't have the Tzalem Elohim, Ukamo HaKofim, Ukamo HaKofim, what does that mean? They're like monkeys. Right? So the Rambam is speaking about Cro-Magnum and Neanderthal man, you hear this? That were roaming around the earth at the time of Adam and Chava. This got the Rambam in a lot of hot water. The Raman didn't believe in Shadim. So he said when the Gemara speaks about Shadim, it means these Cro Magnum creatures or these Neanderthal creatures. You hear what he's saying? That Adam was having relations with them, 
and he gave birth to these human-like creatures. Only after 130 years, David, did he make up with Chava, and then they got together, and then he had a child called Chase, who did have the Tzelem Elohim. It doesn't say they were created. What do you mean created? So where did these creatures come from, okay. right? Where did these creatures come from? Who and we'll see hints in the, t in the Chumash about this soon. We'll see hints about this in the Chumash. Raf Salavechik and a Moshe Shabashir, attended by hundreds of people in Boston, made an incredible statement. The Midrash says, Ramban quotes it, that the flood did not affect anybody or anything living in Eretz Yisrael was not affected by the flood. Anybody living in, in Eretz Yisrael was not affected by the flood. That's what the Ramban says. Quotes a Barashas Rabbah. Rasavechik made an incredible statement. I wouldn't dare repeat it, but he said it in front of hundreds of people. You're sitting down, have a much of Shabbos in Boston. He said, if you ever meet a human monster, he mentioned Hitler, Stalin, and Pol Pot, who have no shred of any human sympathy. He said, perhaps they are an offspring of Adam and one of these cave women. Because remember, anybody or anything living in Eretz Yisrael was not affected by the flood. So Rav Tavetschik made that astonishing, stunning statement that if you meet a human monster, he mentioned Hitler, Stalin, or Pol Pot, who have no shred of human decency. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, perhaps they are an offspring of, of Adam or one of these cave women. Isn't that incredible? So what makes Adam and Chava unique is they had the godly soul, unlike these other creatures who looked human, but they didn't have a godly soul. Okay? Now, the The Mishnah says everything is in the Torah. Everything is in the Torah, even, even what? Evolution. Rav Kook says something incredible. Rav Cook says something incredible. He says as follows. You can Google it. In Maimar Hay, in Orat HaKodesh. Rav Cook says something incredible. In Maimar Hay, in Orat HaKodesh. He says that the physical world is a reflection and manifestation of the spiritual world. Therefore, if in the spiritual world we develop and evolve ever so slowly and gradually, then certainly in the physical world, we also develop. <coughs> Rav Kook says that just like Am Yisrael evolved spiritually from Memtes Shari Tuma to Memtes Shari Kidusha, so too did God use evolution in the physical creation of the world. Just like God used evolution in the spiritual world, we evolved from Memtes Shari Tuma to Memtes Shari Kedusha. So he said that the exodus from Egypt and the process of leaving Egypt and getting the Torah, that was spiritual evolution. The Jews evolved from 49 levels of Tuma to 49 levels of, of Kedusha. So if God used that, in the spiritual world, says Rav Kook, God also used evolution in the physical process of creation. Isn't that incredible? That's what Rav Kook says. Now, so before Rav Kook said it, if you look in Genesis 2-7, the Ramban, you don't have a copy, but you can, it's been translated into English, Bereshis 2, Pasuk 7, where the Torah says, He Adam nefesh chaya. He says, Adam became a nefesh chaya. What does that mean? Says the Ramban on Genesis 2-7 that mankind developed through three distinct sta stages. He says the initial Adam's body was first dirt. And then this evolved like a plant. And then further with divine input, man was able to move First as a fish, and then as a land animal. You hear the Ramban is saying? It's just incredible. You don't have to believe me. You get yourself a Ramban from translating into English. Genesis 2, 7. And he writes, 
the animal that was to become man had both the physical structure and the power of perception of a human. Only after that was accomplished, says the Ramban, was the spirit of God, the Neshama, breathed into him. So Ramban is saying that God's direct and newly created contribution, the spirit came to man only after, only after the body was what? Was evolved from what? From the earth, and then this body became a fish, and then the fish became a land animal, who knows how long that process took? When we say 5779, what do we mean? When this creature got the godly soul, that doesn't contradict science. Science say that man as we know him is not older than 6,000 years. You can Google that too. Scientists agree that man as we know him is not older than 6,000 years. The Torah says 5779. But until this creature got the godly soul, who knows how many millions of years passed. When this creature got the godly soul, that was 5779 years ago. You hear what the Ramban is saying? Now, I think he was very Haredi, but some people say, do not confuse me with the facts, because my mind is already what? Made up. So the Ramban is speaking about the guided evolution of life from inert matter to mankind. That God used evolution as a tool to create the world and create mankind. The Torah has nothing to fear from evolution. The evolution process is guided and controlled by Kurdish Baruch Hu. What appears to be random, natural processes, in reality is what? Where Hashem runs the world. Hatevas gemat pi Elohim. Hatevas gemat pi Elohim. Evolution, one minute, could be a tool that God used to create the world. It looks like it's random and natural, but that's our test to realize that Akurish Baruch Hu is in control of the process. How dare we say that God could not use evolution? Are you going to limit God's talents and powers, Chas Hmm? One minute, one minute. Now, Rashi says, why did Chava give the fruit to Adam? Rashi said that she was afraid that she's going to die and he would marry somebody else. Who? Who's the competition, Avraham? <laughs> Rashi tells us the reason that she gave her husband the fruit she couldn't stand the fact that she would die and he'd marry somebody else. Who's the somebody else? Who's the competition, Avram? Hmm? And Cain says to God, you've cast me out from your presence. All that find me will kill me. Who is Cain afraid of? If he's the only person around, who is all that find me will kill me? So who is he afraid of? Who is he afraid of, right? So obviously you see they were the other creatures that looked human, that were roaming the earth who knows how many years before Adam. But again, what made Adam and Chava unique, says the Ramban in Genesis 2.7. I'm not making this up, you can look it up. The Ramban, writing in the year 1265, Seven. speaks about the guided evolution. The evolution process guided and controlled by Kurdish Baruch Hu. It appears random, but that's our test to connect the dots. That is all from Hashem, that God was in charge of the process until the creature we know as man appeared the way we know him, and that is 57, 79 years ago. But before that stage, millions of years could have, uh, could have gone on. The Ramban writing in Beresha says that the six days couldn't be days, Avram, because the sun was not created until what? Day four, so how could it be a day? What a difference a day makes. So Ramban says the six days were six periods or stages of creation. He says, a day of God. Psalm 90 says, A day in your eyes, God, is what? A million years, right? He says the first three days there was no sun. That's the Ramban. The Rambam and Moran Nebuchim 
writes that the six days of creation represent a conceptual, not an historical account of creation. So says the Rambam Marinavuchim. Isn't that incredible? Now, Ovadia Sforno, the great Sforno, one of the Rishonim, says that the creation of Adam, he was also super Haredi, he lived in the 1400s, a commentary on Tanakh, on the Ovadia Sforno, everybody studies him. The creation of Adam was at the end of a long process that started with an animal which gradually evolved until this creature was given the Tzalem Elohim. Life evolved over time, says Ovad Yisvarno, so says Rav Kook, so says the Shamshul Full Hirsch, so says the Nitziv. He was super Haredi. The Avon the Nitziv says the same thing. And the Tferet Yisrael says that. Wow. And again, according to Rav Kook, the Exodus proves evolution. The Exodus from Memteshari Tuma to Memteshari Kedusha, that was a process of evolution. We evolved spiritually. So if God used evolution in the spiritual process, He also used evolution in the physical process of creation. So says Rav Kook in Ora Takodesh, Mamar Hey. It is Aram. That's pretty amazing. That the Exodus proves. We evolved spiritually from 49 levels of Tumah, 49 levels of Kedusha. So whatever is true in the spiritual world is also true what? The physical world. You hear what he's saying? Now, there are remarkable similarities between the account of creation and evolution. If you read Genesis carefully, there are amazing similarities between what's written in Bereshis and what evolution says. First there was light. Then there was the firmament, followed by ocean, land, and vegetation. That's how the Torah describes it, right? The creation of the planets and stars was followed by fish and birds, and then by land animals. Gracious one. Only finally, as the culmination of Hashem's work, was man created. The Torah's description and account of creation in a natural progression points to its divine origin. Because no human being, no mortal, at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu could have known that modern geologists also believed that plants and water-based animals were the first to be created. You hear this? How would Moshe Rabbeinu know when he wrote the Torah what geologists are saying today? It follows exactly cr creation. Now the randomness of evolution, it seems to be random is no more anti-Jewish than the seemingly chances events of Megillat Esther. Megillat Esther, does it have God's name there? No. It's the only book in Tanakh that ain't got God's name. If you read the book, it looks like a string of coinky dinkies. <laughs> Esther happened to win the beauty contest, right? There were prettier girls than her. Mordechai had a Dafke walked by when Big Son Mosheres were plotting. It looks like it's a string of randomness. Mm -hmm. But you have to connect the dots. Shem name is not even mentioned. A superficial reading of Esther can lead one to conclude that the entire story is what? A string of coincidences. You hear this? Yeah. But it, that's the test. Are we going to believe that it all happened on its own? Or are we going to know that it was the divine author who called the shots? That evolution is just a tool that God used to create the world. You're going to say God could not have used evolution? Are you putting a limit on God's talents? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? Do so you think you're being from and you're not being from? You're saying God couldn't have used evolution to create the world? The Ramban says that he did. In Bereshis 2.7. Sforno says he did. Therese Yisrael says he did. Rav Kook says he did. Rav Hirsch says he did. The Nitziv, they all say that God used evolution to create man. Rabbi. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Genesis 2.7 This creature that became man got the godly soul 57, 79 years ago. But until we got there, Avram, millions of years could have passed, says the Ramban. 
Many people don't want to hear that. Because they say, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is, um, my mind's already made up. The Torah has nothing to fear from evolution. Beresh is Borel Akim at the Shemayim Esoretz. What did God create first? Shemayim. What are Shemayim? The Rabban quotes a Midrash, Shemayim is Eshumayim. What is Eshumayim, David? What's fire and water? That's nebula. What the Ramban wrote in 1265, scientists today believe that the first creation was the nebula. It's called the fiery liquid gas. And from that, the planets came. What's fiery liquid gas in Hebrew? Eshumayim. That's Shomayim. Eshumayim. The Ramban writes about that. First God created the cosmic soup, the Eshumayim, Shomayim. And from that he created what? The earth. So what's wrong with that? Right? Millions of years. The Rabban calls Medish Bereshis Rabbah, chapter 8. It talks about days. It's Yom HaShakudish Baruch Hu. Bereshis Rabbah, before the Ramban. It's not talking about our days. It can't be. We didn't have the sun until day 4. It's talking about God's days, which is a period or stage of creation. And who knows how many millions of years could have passed. Mm -hmm. But our clock begins ticking, Yael, mm -hmm. when this creature called Adam received what? The Tselem Elohim. That was 57, 79 years ago. But before that, millions of years could have passed, or previous worlds. Doesn't contradict the Torah. Mm -hmm. So these giant dinosaur bones that you see, Avram, you see, you know, you go to German colony, you see this. This is not a fake, this is a, a bone. This is from previous world. Yehuda took the picture, right? So therefore, they never made it onto the ark because they were long extinct when Noah got around. Did they say this? What? Did they say this before Darwin came out? Yes, I, I told you. If you have the copy in front of you, this is the Danzig edition, 1845. And Darwin didn't come out with his theory until 1859. Hello? Yiddish, are you getting this? Yeah, I wanted to say something. You know, the thing Why weren't we told this? I don't know. Because people say, don't confuse me with the facts, you know. There was a, 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 a few years back. There, there was a few years back, there was this, uh, this, uh, What's it called? The milky, the milky product. The milky product. You're listening? This chocolate pudding. They had a picture of dinosaur on it. So the Badat said, if you don't take off the dinosaur, we're taking away our heksher. <laughs> what are you afraid of a dinosaur for? <laughs> right? What? People say, I'm a dinosaur. I ain't got no cell phone. But you don't have to be afraid of the dinosaurs. They existed. They had bones all over. The Tres Yisrael already writes about these giant creatures in Baltimore by America. I want to be in America. Baltimore, America, he writes. And you're up and he names them. Years before Darwin. So what are you saying? So, what so are why you, what are you afraid of? I don't understand why some people are, when they take their kids to the museum, they don't want to look at the dinosaur exhibit. Or they make them cover it up. Wow. What about the six days of creation? One day is 24 hours, isn't it? How could it be? You're not, you're not listening to me, my dear Yosef. The sun was not created until day number four. So how could it be 24 hours? There was no sun until day. What a difference a day makes. Right? How, how could it be a day, says the Ramban, when there was no sun yet? It's talking about a day of God, which could be millions of years, as Psalm 90 says. And, and, and it's amazing. It should say, Chava Yom Rishon. Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. It doesn't say Yom Echad. Yom Rishon, why? Because it wasn't the first day. Because it, it was just day one, because it existed worlds before that. This is day one, not Yom Rishon. Very, Chumash is so exact. It doesn't say Yom Rishon. Like Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. It says Yom Echad. That's pretty amazing. Rabbi, what's so beautiful about this is the fact that we're so connected to plants and animals and you just said why? Why? Because we, so we come from them. Isn't that incredible? And right? Explains my ex-husband. 
Ah, you, the dinosaur. Huh? Whoa. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, you're, you're, speaking about ex-husbands reminds me of a story. Now, all my stories are true, but some did not happen yet. What? Now, this is a true story. Pesach, hear this? This guy walks by a cemetery, and he sees a guy sitting by a, a matzeva crying uncontrollably, sobbing, hysterical crying. So he wants to calm him down. He says, there, there, calm down. Was this a relative of yours? Was this a dear friend of yours? Why are you so hysterically crying over this monument, over this, uh, how do you say monument in English? This matzeva, this, 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 the, the headstone. Was he a dear friend, a dear relative? He says, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't even know him. You didn't even know him? Why are you crying hysterically? He says, I'll tell you, he was my wife's first husband. <laughs> you Don't you get it? Absolutely. Wife's first husband. Yes, Liesel. Hafokba, vafokba, the kulaba. What does that mean? Keep turning. Everything is a Torah. Evolution, dinosaurs, it's all in the Torah. We have nothing to fear from the t science. So, who did Cain marry? Well, who did Cain marry? As I'll say, they were born with twin sisters. Twins. Twins. They were born with female twins. Don't you think there are animals today that reflect? Some of those animals in the old days. Rabbi Soloveitchik, again, Larry, Rabbi Soloveitchik, on a Matzah Shabbos year, you, your father must know this, made this incredible statement that if you meet a human monster, perhaps they're an offspring of Adam and one of these cave women. Because the cave women. Hillary? Hillary? They looked human, but they did not have the godly soul. And therefore, these human monsters, he said, perhaps are an offspring. Now, he made that statement in the 1960s in front of hundreds of people in a Boston Mosh Tashav Is that the Soloveitchik that got Alzheimer's? That's the, the, the great Rav Soloveitchik, the one and only. Based on this Rama, Marin Avuchim, that before Adam and Chava, they were these human-like creatures, Kamoa Kofim. They looked human, but they were like ape-like creatures and that Adam mated with them, according to Gemur and Ervin, when he had a lover's quarrel with whom? With Chava, he walked out and he had, I think it's called a one night stance. But after 130 years, he went, he made up with her. And then they gave birth to a creature, Bidmusa Kitzalmo, Shet, Bidmusa Kitzalmo. But before that, he was giving birth to creatures that looked human but didn't have the Tzalem Elohim, because their mothers didn't have the Tzalem Elohim. Ebenezer, Ezra, are you getting this? Mm, I don't want to shock you. How can people what? say that if you believe this, you're an apocorus? People say what they want, right? No, they also say what? Right? Because they don't know. Get a Ramban. Look in Genesis 2, 7. There's a long Ramban there. Avram, you can get it in English. I read that. Rabbi Chavel translated to English. Charles Chavel. The Yodam on Nefesh Chaya. The Ramban writes... The evolution process is guided and controlled by Kodesh Baruch Hu, and it was different stages until this creature got the godly soul. The great Nachmanides, who was Haredi, I think, Bill, I think he was Haredi. Nachmanides, right? But some people, they don't want to hear it. I don't know why, why are they afraid of, but... Uh, Rabbi, who was Lilith? Who was Lilith? Lilith. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. The mermaid. Hmm. Are no, that's about. a whole different uh, topic. Yeah. Me, like, right? Right. They find Cro Magnum cre in the museum, natural history, they have Cro Magnum, Neanderthal man. What do you do about that? What do you mean you don't know? Skeletons of Neanderthal man. Right. They have a lot of cavemen in Gaza today. Gaza? I don't want to insult the Anathol man, but there's a lot of them roaming around in Gaza today. Yeah, Our peace partners, what? On, uh, on Shabbos? On Shabbos? Yeah, they're trying to break, they broke, uh, they broke part of the wall. The Neanderthals, yeah. right? That's what we're dealing with, right? But anyway, the Torah has nothing to fear from science. Uh, we have a class on Thursday, current events in the Torah.
Uh, any other questions? We Can say yes, Vakasha. We know Hashem knows everything, future, past, present, everything. Right, right. right. He created four worlds before. Right. He knew that he wouldn't be satisfied uh, with it, right? The, and then it came to our world. You said I now it's good. It's a challenge for the future when you see all these people mm. saying atheists. The, mm. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Right. But the Noim Elimelech, my great great grandfather, says, well, what's the point? What is God telling me that he created these worlds that didn't work out and he started again? Didn't he know it's not going to work out? Right. It's to give man chizuk. That's right. We all fail. Yeah. Don't give up. God says, I wasn't successful the first time right. and I didn't give up. You know, Daniel? So if God says, I didn't give up, you guys don't give up. It's okay to fail. God loves man so much that he wrote about himself that he had to destroy his handiwork before the marble. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. To demonstrate his love for man, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves if we fail, and who doesn't fail, right? Get up, and what? Starting over. God says, I did it, you guys can do it. Isn't that tremendous? How do you say chizuk in English? Encouragement.